I'm Dale. Welcome to Hot Intros. Oh, okay. Give an intro to the camera first and then we'll jump in. You go. Me go. I'm Adam J. I am the co-founder and CEO of Revenue Reimagined and co-host of the Revenue Reimagined podcast. And Dale Zawinski, co-founder of Revenue Reimagined, co-host of the uh, Revenue Reimagined podcast, and I have to take care of him once in a while. Wing number one, the warm intro. Okay. We're starting you off easy. All right. So, Eat the wing, go into the question. Okay. Oh, we're pleading the wing. Okay. He's trying to prove a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ego, right? Always. Well, speaking of ego, the first question. Which of you is the better seller and why? He's the better seller. Oh, okay. Easy. Not the answer you expected, right? <laughs> so I think we each bring our strengths and our weaknesses to the business. Yeah. When it comes to actually closing deals, don't get me wrong, I can close a deal. But Dale has a way of relating with people that I think is a little better than I do. Whereas on the back end, I tend to do better with the onboarding and getting the process together and bringing the team together. Yeah, definitely on the operations side. Adam's like nailing operations. So I think that's, that's a fair answer. That's why you two are, are good partners. Yeah. 100%. Note that Dale just agreed with me. Yeah. I mean, it was, giving him, it was giving him a compliment, but nonetheless. I had to take it once in a while. Uh, I had to take the compliment. It's very game. rare that. All right. Happens. All right. Well, Connell and Cameron, in case you ever need proof. All right. Wing number two, the cayenne cold call. The blue one right there. Cayenne. Yeah. Spicier than any cold call. Okay. But also not that spicy yet. No, I'm still freezing you in. Now I'm going to have it all in my face. Yeah, that's the, that's the worst part. There's a lot of talk on LinkedIn and all. This sales tactic is bad. This one's dying. Whatever. What is one aspect of B2B sales that you actually can't wait for it to die? And uh, you, like, you, like, you are waiting for that day where it's like, finally, you'll never see it again. I think, um, I think these fake frameworks, like all these fake frameworks and people putting things out that are not, like, they're going to give them the founders and the founders are going to go do some work and then it doesn't actually work and then the founder is like, then you go hire somebody and they run out of runway. Give an example of a framework that you would uh, name and I'm shame. I'm not going to call anybody out. I'm not uh, going to call anybody out. You want to die, but you're not willing to contribute? Yeah, I'm not going to call anybody out. All right. All right. <laughs> the, the, uh, the other one that I can't wait to die is the LinkedIn email. Wow. I have never responded to a single LinkedIn email, and I've never advised anyone on my team to send a LinkedIn. Oh. Yeah, I like forgetting it exists, honestly. Until you get 27 of them. Yeah, that's true. Just kind of ignore them. My point? Yeah. <laughs> but you, will you name a framework that you think no one should use? The framework of you could build an entire go-to-market motion for a couple thousand dollars and here's a 40-page framework and you're just going to build your startup. So like the it's viral LinkedIn possible. post. Like a, or like a playbook framework. Yeah. Like here's a framework, here's a playbook. Go, that doesn't go take into account the uniqueness of your customer, your ICP, your product, your or market. Or even doing the work. Like how, how do you actually take the messaging yeah. and actually do the execution? You can only learn messaging by trying. Right. You can't just be like, oh, I got my message. I'm just going to hit that thing till the end of time. Right. So it's like, okay, I'm going to give you a framework. You're going to go put in like X, Y, Z, yeah. and then it doesn't work. And then you're like, why did I spend $2,000 on it? Your, your SMB framework that is cold calling and cold texting people that you're going to sell to a, a company that wants to be enterprise is never going to work. Yeah. Every frameworks are good, but every company is different. You have to be able to implement them. Yeah. Don't right. buy shit off LinkedIn. All right. We got SDR tiers next. That's okay. I think that's my favorite one. Something tells me it's going to go from that to boom. This one, this one like in a few minutes. Little feel, tingle. It, 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 little tingle. Warm, but it's like a pineapple. It like, has some good it's it's got, some good It's got Georgia it. peaches in it. Ah, that's what, you that's what it is. Yeah, it's got some sweetness to it. It's only seven. Yeah. I see Adam sweating a little bit. <laughs> bit of a, a one on question, but if you had to sell sand in the desert, how would you do it? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> now, sell me this pen, literally. Sand in the desert. I think just for, before we go, back, actually, I feel like a lot of sales tools that are trying to be sold right now feel a little bit like selling sand, sand in, in the, the desert. desert. Yeah. I mean, you have such an abundance of it. You have to start with discovery. Like before I even sold it to you, I need to under sold it to you. I need to understand what you want. What's the purpose of what you're trying to use it for? Then we're going to get into, is it that I need to sell you sand in a bag so that you get a pillow? I need to sell you sand to throw on your business partner? You got to start with the questions before you start just going in and selling. Yeah. Discovery. What's the value proposition? What are you trying to use it for? What's the differentiator? So you have a ton of sand, but do you need soft sand? Do you want it for cement? We live in Florida. I'm on the West Coast, which is the best coast. We always have white soft sand. So... I would always like, do it with the sand. In the Middle East, they're buying sand all the time. So like, why is the Middle East buying sand? Right. Because they don't have cement sand. Right. They, they have sand, but it's not the right sand. Right. And if you just stay at that surface level piece of sand, you're never going to figure it out. Yep. Type of sand. What's the values? All right. Number four? Yeah, let's go for it. All right. This is the ghosted pepper. Yeah, this one's going to be uh, hot. 
That's a little hotter. Yeah. You can feel it. Hotter. You can feel this one. Yeah. I'm not dying yet, but you like you definitely know there is you a know difference between three and four. You a also massive know, difference. The more you talk, the worse this one gets. Because the more you get air in, the more it goes pepper. Yeah. But what's like the spiciest thing? Like you most like you're like a hundred percent this has to happen and you're a hundred percent no way. Let me go first. Yeah, go for I it. I am not all in on the AI bots. I don't necessarily be believe that you are going to build an LLM and build a bot of yourself. Uh, people are then going to pay $29, $39, $40 dollars a month to have access to it. I, I think it's a cool little fad. I don't think it's something that's going to really pick up and take off. Yeah, and I, and I actually think AI is like the future. So that's I think that's where we dis differentiate because we've talked to John Barrows. We've talked to... Um, um morgan we talked to a bunch of these people that believe when you have enough content you can generate your own llm w whether it sells for a long period of time or not it's all about the value back to the same problem yeah. like what is the value you're trying to solve for a lot of people can't get on john or morgan's calendar so if you can ask them a question like at least you can get a response right away so but do, yeah. but do you want a response from a bot or do, like if i want, like, want time with morgan i want time with morgan okay but if you're Adam J, maybe you reach out to Morgan, he gives you the time. If you're no, like an up and coming SDR, like you get Morgan's time. SDR is a better chance of getting Morgan's time than I <laughs> just so far. Well, that is true. Right, so is there, is there anything you, or vice versa, that you believe in that you don't? So you don't believe in the future AI, I mean, that, that end all say, well, you think there is value there. Uh, is there a flip flop? Probably like accepting calendar invites. <laughs> <laughs> you always bust my ass about um, <laughs> calendar invites. I'm big in the go to network stuff. I know you are too. I don't know how bought in you are in the go to network. I mean, we are standing here. That's <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Let's hear the honest truth here. <laughs> no, I, I think we're both bought in. I think when you look at the general core philosophy of sales and where sales is going, I think generally speaking, we're aligned. Where we differ is in the actual approach. So, like when we're working with clients and we're building an outbound motion. We have very different approaches as to what that messaging looks like, when we should say it, what the steps of the sequence should be, how we should build a model. We're very different in that aspect. Like what you like the jabbing you see here and the jabbing you see in the podcast is exactly the same way we are with our clients on calls. But on the core of sales, I, I think we're aligned and I think that's why I decided to let him be my big <laughs> okay. final wing. Not that bad so far. You're, you're surviving. How are you doing? Oh, Although, look at this wing. This is like a mutant wing. Yeah. We like zoom in on sure, the size of that wing. Make sure wing. you get the part with the sauce on it right there. This part? This yeah, part? there we go. All right, this is the lost bee. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Not bad. <laughs> Two very different reactions. <laughs> we gotta let it sit a little bit. Let it sit it's like a, a, bit. a little That's burn. Like a, it, there's a burn. All right. Super difficult selling time right now for yeah. sellers everywhere, teams, individuals. Obviously, lots of bad things and good. What's something good that you think has come out of this environment? Two separate things, one each that is, yeah, a good thing that's come out of the last year of difficult sales. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think the best thing that's come out of sales at this point is... You're sweating a little. Am I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the best, <laughs> the best thing that's come out of sales is actually focusing on the customer and the value. So as Jocko was talking about on the bow tie, you have uh, a value proposition but then you actually have to deliver the value. So we're spending a lot more time with the customers, what that value proposition is. And if we generate on the on the business value and the, and the value proposition, that's where I think the uh, a huge part of this is. Like we've been just dumping money on the awareness side yeah. on top of funnel. Just hire a big team. Yeah. Hire the system, the sales will come in. Like I always say like sales and marketing is a promise to deliver value. Then you actually have to deliver the value. So yeah. I think in this evolution, we're now delivering value or to me, that's to those who aren't. Well, I think that's where that's where it struggled for a long yeah. of time. So now we're actually getting to have to deliver the value or you die. Yeah. So the way the market's changed, layoffs are horrible. Don't get me wrong. But I think what we're seeing is more of a right sizing in the market than a mass layoff and mass reduction. I think when you look at where the market's gone and growth responsibly, Growth responsibly versus little, growth little, numbness, little the numbness on the tongue <laughs> uh, versus growth at all costs is actually a good thing. Yeah, it is long term probably a good thing as much as it's painful in the moment. You can make fun of me. It's okay. All right, that's it. That's a good thing. Not that bad. You survived. I heard survive. a rumor. I heard a rumor there was a sixth one. Uh, and that's like a post credits wing, so we'll have to like all we'll right. have to come back and see if that's there. All right. All right. So what are you gonna do for this one? I don't have a sixth question ready. Okay. So each of you is gonna get to ask the other one. Question you haven't asked each other yet. 
Oh, so but you want to know about the other one. Oh. I can't even give you that one. I just have to think about it. I have to think about this for a second. This is where Katrina decides how much pain you want to be in. And not you. You don't get to look. She decides. Look into my eyes real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Cheers. do it, baby. All right, in we go. Builds. <clears throat> <laughs> Mr. Payne. Let's go. Okay. All right. When, we, when, we, when I called you that first time that we were kind of getting, we had a call. Yeah. What did you really think? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. So the backstory is people are going to want to know it. Dale and I were introduced by someone we were both interviewing for the same role. And he reached out to me basically saying, <laughs> basically saying, we're interviewing for this role uh, next week. Like, do you guys, do you still want to talk? If not, you want to push it off. Um, what was my honest thought? So I didn't know you now, then, like I do now. My honest first thought was this motherfucker, sorry, <laughs> um, is trying to get information to see how I'm going to approach this so he could circumvent it and get the job. Oh, all right. That's a good question. But we, talk, but we did talk. We did. Is that how yeah. you guys got to know That's each other? That's how we get to know yeah. each other, yeah. Time for the same job, ended up as partners. Yeah. But so I did either of you take the job or did you end up? So yeah. <laughs> so I, I am and we're gonna go there. All right, um, all right. So I got the job. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Dale dodged a bullet. Oh. My question is, what was your real reaction when I got the job and you didn't? And part two, when I left, did your mind go to I told you so? Interesting. Um my real reaction when you got the job, because I found out that you flew out there was like he he outflanked me which was super cool so i knew the outflank was it was one of the reasons so that was super cool um and we had been talking for a long period of time like so i already knew all the the backstory so i was actually happy for you because i knew all the pain that you were going through so i was happy that you were you were getting out of there i like it <laughs> all right so before we end you can look into that camera and give a final message for viewers and you can then do that camera okay it final can be uh, it can be an ad for what you do it could be a, a, a lost a last hot tip it could be a fun fact about dinosaurs whatever's on your oh, mind fun fact about dinosaurs um last goodbye when you're going to scale don't buy that playbook online make sure that you do the work find the right people and scale as possible awesome um come check out our podcast revenue reimagined um today we dropped a hot one women in sales katrina ashley nikki ivy we killed it today we need more diversity in the in the sales game go check it out all right, you did it. Thanks. Good job. Thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> that was awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you.